Hello! Today's talk is on how to distinguish between vision threading and not vision threading causes of red eye. The whole purpose of this talk is to review the signs and symptoms that if you see in a patient increases your index of suspicion that they may have a disease entity that could potentially take their sight. We, re we will re review some case examples. However, don't get too bogged down in the details of the case examples as details in regards to the causes of red eye will be done in a separate talk. So, let's start with a case. Imagine that you're on an ER rotation. You are on a 12-hour shift. Your shift started at 2 p.m. It is now 1.59 and 30 seconds a.m. You are almost done with your shift, but unfortunately, in walks a patient with a wonderful red eye. So your job is to figure out how to be efficient and effective in order to get home to take your nap that you so sorely needed, but also to take good care of your patient. So the goal for today is to figure that out. So one great way to organize your thoughts is with a mnemonic, and we all love mnemonics. So your mnemonic for the way to differentiate between vision threading and not vision threading causes of red eye is the mnemonic STOP. So just like any other patient, you're going to stop and try to figure it out. So for this patient, the S in STOP stands for sudden visual loss. The T stands for trauma. The O stands for other signs and symptoms. And the P stands for pain. So if the patient has any of these things, sudden visual loss, trauma, other signs and symptoms that we'll review shortly, or the pain, especially deep boring pain, you truly need to take a second look and make sure that the patient does not have something that could take their sight. So let's go through each of these. The first thing to think about is sudden visual loss. Any patient who has sudden visual loss really deserves an emergent ophthalmology consult. Do remember that sudden visual loss can involve any part of the visual pathway. However, for the purposes of red eye, lots of times the part of the vision pathway that is involved is the cornea. So let's go through some examples. So here are three common examples that can present with red eye as well as sudden visual loss. This first example is a corneal ulcer you can see that there's pus on the cornea. And one classic reason this happens is the patient can come in and sleep in their contact lenses. Again, we're going to use some case examples. Don't worry about the details of each case example, as causes of red eye will be reviewed, we've reviewed in detail in the future. The second one is an example of cellulitis. You can see that there's redness around the skin, so there's infection of the skin. And if that gets into the orbit, that can present with visual loss. And then finally, a classic angle closure. In angle closure glaucoma, the angle, which is on the inside, right where the iris meets the cornea in the trabecular meshwork, once that gets blocked, the pressure can go way up. When that happens, you can have a fixed and mid dilated pupil. You can see the iris plastered to the cornea on slit lamp, and you can see also swelling of the cornea, which you can tell because there is loss of iris detail. The eye will also be red and painful to the touch. So sudden visual loss is the first thing to think about. The second thing to think about in your mnemonic of STOP is trauma. The mechanism of trauma is very important. For example, if someone comes in and tells you they were playing swords with their friend and took one in the eye, you really think that, the open globe, that an open globe has happened. However, remember that both sharp and blunt injury can rupture the eyeball and lead to an open globe. So let's look at some examples of trauma. So here are three classic examples of trauma. This is an example of an open globe. This person, unfortunately, took something, either blunt or sharp injury, and ruptured the eye. This part of the iris should be here, and you can see that there's a corneal laceration with extrusion of the intraocular contents. This person needs a shield on the eye and an emergent ophthalmology consult. You need to be very careful not to push pressure on the eye because you could actually cause further extrusion of the intraocular contents. This patient has a corneal foreign body. Classic ways that people get a corneal foreign body are either working underneath their cars or hammering metal on metal or grinding metal on metal. Anyone who is grinding or hammering metal on metal, you truly need to think about not only a corneal foreign body, but potentially something inside the eyeball. And if that's the case, you need to think about getting a CAT scan and or an x-ray. And then finally, this is a hyphema, a classic blunt injury where there's bleeding inside of the eye, fills the eye up with blood, and this again needs an urgent ophthalmology consult. So trauma is definitely something to think about as a potential increased index of suspicion of the patient having a vision threatening cause of red eye. 
Our third item that we need to think about are other signs and symptoms. If the patient has any of these items, it really makes you think that they could have something that could be very serious to their vision. Associated signs and symptoms of some of the disease entities we've already, disease entities we've already talked about include nauseousness and vomiting. Angle closure glaucoma classically presents with a patient who's throwing up, they're throwing up everywhere, and their eye is red. If someone has double vision and a red eye, that's consistent with an orbital cellulitis. If someone has sensitivity to light and a red eye, you think about inflammation of the internal parts of the eye. And then finally, someone who sleeps in contacts and has a red eye, you truly need to think about a corneal ulcer. We've talked about some of these disease entities when we talked about sudden visual loss. For example, angle closure presents with sudden visual loss, as well as the other signs and symptoms of nauseousness and vomiting. We talked about orbital cellulitis presenting with sudden visual loss. In addition, can also present with diplopia, double vision. We talked about how sleeping near contact can present with sudden visual loss, but in this instance, it also can present with the pus and those kind of things, especially in the morning. And then finally, iritis can present with sensitivity to light as the other signs and symptoms. And also you can see these little tiny white dots. Those are the inflammatory cells on the inside of the cornea. And that gets us to our final signs and symptoms, an increase or index of suspicion of the patient having a vision-threatening cause of red eye, which is pain. Many of the non-vision-threatening causes of red eye are not painful. Conjunctivitis, subconjunctival hemorrhage, dry eye, and those kind of things. However, someone who has pain, especially deep boring pain, may have something that needs to be referred to an ophthalmologist in the short term, such as angle closure or glaucoma, iritis, cellulitis, and scleritis. We've already talked about angle closure, orbital cellulitis, and iritis. The new one is scleritis. So in scleritis, you see redness of the sclera. And in this patient in particular, you see some whiteness of the sclera because the conjunctiva has actually been taken away with the inflammatory response. This is extremely important to recognize because this patient potentially could have further erosion through the sclera and extrusion of the intraocular contents. So the presence of pain should increase your index of suspicion of having vision-threatening diseases such as angle closure, orbital cellulitis, scleritis, and iritis. So, in conclusion, STOP is an easy mnemonic to remember in order to help you differentiate between the causes of red eye that can take the patient's sight and causes of red eye that are not vision-threatening. Remember the S for sudden visual loss, the T for trauma, the O for other signs and symptoms such as diplopia, and those kind of things. And the P is for pain, especially deep, boring pain. By using this mnemonic, hopefully you can help differentiate those things that need to be referred to an ophthalmologist. And in doing so, you can take really good care of your patient that has come in at 2 a.m. Thank you very much.